Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're taking a look at L Black Legend, and this is the demo because the game is not out yet. In fact, its release date is yet to be announced. It is indicated that it might come out sometime in 2021, but we'll have to see about that. So this game is currently, or the demo is currently free. I'll uh, provide a link in the description so you can download it from Steam. Uh, it is a turn-based strategy RPG by Warcave, and it is indie. They are uh, publishing it themselves. It's set in the 17th century, a dark city that you have to enter. It's being um, uh, infiltrated with some sort of insanity-inducing fog or something like that. That's that's the gist I got from it. I'll read the description off of um, off Steam here for you. A dark, immersive, turn-based strategy RPG. Master tactical combat and the art of 17th century alchemy to liberate a doomed city from a bloodthirsty cult inspired by the great alchemist Mephisto, 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 something like that. So I have not taken a look at this game at all. We are on version 0.1.69, sorry, sorry, 6.29. And uh, we're gonna just jump right in, see what it has to offer. Let's do um, easy use of philosopher's stone. I don't know what that is. In battle saving, uh, normal, hard, custom. I don't know, we'll do it on normal, I guess. Single save mode, I have no idea what that means either. It'd be nice if these had tooltips. They would exactly the change. Okay, whatever, we'll see. Okay, cool, so we can uh, create our character. And uh, let's see, got male and female. We've got a variety of heads. Uh, whatever, that's fine. Hair. Okay, not not a ton of options yet. Um, well, this is the 17th century. Let's go for a hideous hairstyle like that. Hair color. Yeah, nice ginger. Facial hair. Um, uh, well, that's probably probably about the right look for the time. Can we name him? No. Oh, we can name him now. Uh, this will be, uh... Um... Out. Oh, outcast doesn't really, uh... I'll just reuse my real name. Doug. Douglas. There you go. Douglas from Scotland, maybe? I mean, Douglas is Scot Scottish. Are you sure you... I am not Scottish, by the way. Um, are you sure you want to finalize your hero? Yes. Okay. Uh, main quest. Undo the shackles. And the Gilded Claw. Head west to the Merchant's Guild. Guess so we can rotate just by um, left-clicking. And... Why... Oh, we move with Wazda, okay. Stepping over bodies, that's unfortunate. Can I zoom? Can't zoom. Ooh. Unless, of course, your camera kind of messes up. This is a cutscene, I am no longer in control. Name's Martin. I would settle for more pleasant introductions, but now's the time for a more simple question. Why have you come here? That is a good question, since, uh... Well, apart from the king. I've seen my fair share of looters, treasure hunters, and idiots alike. That's a new one. If you want to stay alive, then ask your hand to join the Gilded Claw. I'll take you there as long as you don't slow me down. Get those legs moving, it's not far from here. Get those legs moving, it's not far from here. Okay. Just was to move around while well, I already did that. Move the camera with right mouse button, yes. Uh, the E button can be used to interact with objects when prompted. Some objects can also be climbed. Uh, press P to open the menu. 
Okay, so this uh, is set in it, it is it's either set in the low countries of Europe or like a low countries inspired location. Don't know if it's actually historical. Or, you know, I mean obviously there's no maddening fog with master alchemists in real history, not not really. Anyway, but uh I don't know if it's like historical fiction or just fiction fiction. So, yeah, okay, so we can just enter and whatever from there. And camera angle's a little rough. Unfortunately, I can't zoom. That would be nice. It's not really clear what... Oh, hello. I got... Anything? Can't interact with that. I guess the... Oh, there we go. Locked by some sort of contraption. Oh, oh. We'll have some stamina oh dear. For your journey. Good. See this lock. Ask him for the key to the gate there. We lock up a lot of things in Brad on Johan's orders. Believes it will prevent people from stumbling into places they've no business being. Okay. I was I was just still having a look around. Oh, 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 that's something. Uh, you have obtained a leather tunic. Vermilion has been something I've... Okay, in inventory is I. So we've got a main hand longsword. Simple appearance of the longsword no longer deceives any observer as these steel blades have carried many knights to victory through recent history. Uh, leather tunic, number one. A simple leather tunic that's comfortable but offers little protection. Uh, looks like it increases our speed by 3% and our health by 3%. Catalyzing strike. Attack with a melee weapon. Catalyzing bodily humors on the target. Deals damage to the target. Applies a catalyst to the target. First aid. Stomach punch. Rock throw. Okay, so this is us. And there are some other mercenaries here. Uh, there's our inventory. Oh, I've got a bunch of stuff here. Got a couple of long swords. Abilities. No tooltips on the abilities. Unless these are the abilities. Uh, these are the abilities that are sl in these slots, maybe. Bottle of rum. Take a swig of liquid courage, increasing physical strength, but making it harder to aim. Grants the empowered status effect, which increases strength. Inflicts the blinded status effect, uh, status effect, which reduces marksmanship. Okay, so that's good for melee fighters. Rock throw, pick up a stone throw to the target, deals damage to the target, applies stacks of neg negretto on the target. I remember negretto from um, Witcher 1, but I've never seen it in anything else. Bolster. Salmon is temporarily increased, grants the bolster status effect, can increase, or sorry, which increases stamina. You haven't learned this ability. Okay, so I could switch over. So we got this, which is like 333 three, three, all across the board. This one gives us more, looks like more damage and more health, but we lose the other, whatever those other things are. And what does that look like? A Molotov down there. Okay. Journal. Main quest. Bestiary. Don't have a bestiary. Okay. You willingly entered this place. Should have taken the death sentence, friend. Much better way out. If you say so. Grant is beyond saving, I tell you. If the fog doesn't kill you, the bleeding Mephistians will. Them nutters actually worship the fog and the madman that created it. Why I'm posted here? Simple cowardice. Useless in battle, just like most people indoors. Keep an eye out for lanterns. People hiding may have interesting things to tell. Could save your life someday. Off you go then. Here's the key to the little gate. No point keeping it locked when the cult controls the entire city. 
All right. And I, oh, it's, it's, uh, this door. Gotcha. Nice. And we are, yeah, the, the, not, not crazy about the view angle, but, uh. You lot, hope you haven't forgotten how to swing those weapons. Prepare your group with anything you found. Can't have you die this early. Okay, my whole group. Daggers. It's always nice to have a rogue on hand. And this crossbow would do fine in the hands of a sharpshooter. Shoot down any stragglers from a safe distance. Changing your class will teach you new abilities depending on the weapon you've equipped. Keep using those abilities in battle to learn them forever. Passive abilities are learned by simply having them active in battle and performing actions. You can have free learned abilities from any class alongside the other ones. Remain versatile by swinging classes often and learning new abilities. Head on once you've sorted it all out. I can only distract them for so long, so don't take too long. Okay, we'll try. Uh, finding all the relevant equipment for a class unlocks it, unlocks it for selection. Change your party, press I to open the character menu. Changing to an unlocked class automatically equips the best equipment for that class. Some equipment teaches active or passive abilities to that class. Every time you use an active ability to uh, in combat, you gain you gain make progress toward learning that ability. Passive abilities are easier to learn and simply require you to perform actions in combat. Once an ability is learned, you no longer need to have the weapon that teaches it equipped to use it. Additionally, learned abilities are available as cross-class abilities. Cross-class abilities can be used even when the character isn't that class, but are limited to three. Other requirements still apply, such as required weapons, uh, weapon types. The most powerful ability of each class cannot be cross-classed. Passive abilities are only active when you play the relevant class and cannot be cross-classed. Aim to learn as many abilities as possible on all characters to remain versatile. Every class has different strengths and weaknesses. When a character levels up their perimeters, parameters um, improve based on what class they are. Switch classes often to balance your growth or focus on specific classes for a more specialized approach. That's really cool. So you can actually be any class. You don't have to choose a class. You can be any class with any character. And it's actually not a bad idea to balance it out. But you can also specialize. Hmm. Sounds like this uh, game is going to have a lot of replayability. What else did I get there? Uh, there's the Philosopher's Stone, a powerful alchemical creation that can reawaken the dead, revives a fallen unit, and restores 10% of their maximum HP. That's a leather tunic. Vitriol. A simple concoction that restores 25% of your maximum HP when used. Throwing dagger, simple balanced uh, blade that can be thrown to damage a distant enemy and apply rubido. Yeah, all these things are, um, I remember them from Witcher. The first Witcher. A light crossbow, a light wooden frame enhances mobility when carrying this weapon. Even in times when rifles are available, this weapon's range and reliability should never be underestimated. Ring dagger. The handle is adorned with a small ring used to catch and lock incoming blades. Once locked, the opponent is left wide open for a counterattack. And a simple knife. Simple small blade, favored for being practical and easy to conceal. The versatility of this tool is so wide, nearly every citizen would carry one of them. We got the key. Okay. Um mercenaries that's me so how do I equip how do I equip new weapons oh there you go okay 
Let's put, um... Oh, you can only put the ring dagger in the offhand. Okay. Now let's try, uh, try the crossbow first. And let's, uh, save, I guess. I should probably create a new save. There you go. Um, probably gonna die. There you go. I assume I can take cover. Ooh, what's that? Does that mean that we enter combat once we enter into that area there? Is that their range? That doesn't really make... Maybe they can move that distance. Okay, let's try. There we go. Okay, place your units. Can I move them? No. Oh yeah, definitely put him up there. Yeah, let's start combat. Combat starts. Units take turn to move and attack. Your turn is decided by your initiative, and your initiative is determined by your agility stat. A unit has action points and movement. Action points are used to perform attacks and abilities. Men will let you move across the field. Mix between movement and actions as you like. Once you're out of both, the turn ends. Ending your turn without spending all action points makes your next turn come faster. Oh. When ending your turn, pick a direction you face. Attacking from the back or side would do significantly more damage. Units with shields take even less damage from their left and front, while those with parrying daggers will perform a counterattack. Enough talk for now. Let me remind you how it's done. He runs behind. Stab, stab. This flanking and backstab bonus is only applied for melee attacks. Your prowess in battle will improve more quickly if you know how to exploit it. Ranged attacks would always count as if they were performed from the front. It's your turn now. Show me what you're worth. Okay, that's too bad. Unfortunately, you can't uh, you can't shoot. Like even though this guy is kind of at an angle, he's not going to get a bonus for shooting there. Entering an enemy's vision circle will trigger combat. To avoid combat, stay out of their line of sight. That's cool. It's, it's a tactical game that you can um, you can kind of avoid combat if you want, at least to a degree. The city is overrun with cultists. Depending on your difficulty settings, their activity can be reduced when you battle them. Before combat starts, you may freely place your units within the starting grid. Uh, press R. Press the R button to rotate your units facing. Okay. You. R. Okay. R is not working. That's great. Can I shoot this guy? Nope. Uh, stomach punch. Rock throw. What, well, can't I just use my weapon? That's... Interesting. Oh, wait, there. Catalyzing shot. Perform an attack with a long-range weapon. Yeah, there you go. E. Attack. M. Okay. And how many points have I got? These are my... Those are my points. Okay. So that one's done. I also cannot throw this, so I can... All I can do now is move. I probably... No, I can't step back. I can move... Oh, I can, I can step up there. That's interesting. Sure, let's give it a try. And rotate. Nope. R doesn't do anything. Okay, end turn. We're gonna save our last little bit. I've selected the other guys and had them. I No, I ended his turn. Okay, now we go to the next guy. So, we've got a catalyzing strike. He could run... And he, no, oh, he can't run behind there. He can run there. Oh, 
Okay, let's do that. And catalyzing strike. Planked. Nice. Okay, you're done. Next person. Oh, enemy turn. Okay, so you don't you don't all go. oh he just got his humors changed. I climb all the way up there first. Oh, you did first aid. Oh, interesting. And you can just little chop at my feet. Hmm. Okay. First aid, throw rock. Um, can I can I still rotate? Okay, good. Move behind him and do a choppy chop. Nice. Thirteen points. And turn on you. What happens if I chippy chop right on him? <laughs> eh, not bad. He can still move. He can also do first aid on himself. That's probably not a terrible idea. Okay, end turn. The end turn is super, super slow. Like, it doesn't seem to react until I actually click on somebody. Okay, he's taking a chop on him. And you, sir. Uh, first of all, heal yourself. And then... How are you out of range? That doesn't make any sense. You can shoot him. Another stomach punch. Strike the target in a vital spot to promote alchemical imbalances. Try that. <laughs> I don't know how he punched him in the stomach from there, but... There you go. So I can move him. Um... Say to there. Woo! Jump! Do it! Yeah, there you go. Okay, and rotate? No. Oh, 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 there you go. Okay, so rotate, rotate. R doesn't actually cause him to rotate. You have to click in the direction. All right, move to here. And do a chop on him. Okay. Uh, no, that's fine. Stay where you are. Oh, ow! Rock right on the head. Hmm. Yeah, so now we're, we're like facing, we're like face to face. So let's heal you up. Toss a rock on this guy. I, oh, 18 with a crit. Yeah. And move. I don't know if cover actually does anything, honestly. A little bit unclear about that. So let's just uh, just end turn facing that way. Okay, he's bat patching himself up. And stabbing him in the head. This guy is going to patch himself up as well. I don't know if the uh, height actually gives you any benefit at all. Toss a rock. Ooh, yeah. Changes his humors. Okay, I'm gonna step back, I think. And then end turn facing that way. Okay, Martin's trying to help out. Oh, he stabbed that guy in the back. Awesome. And he's gonna try and get that guy? Not quite. Oh, he might actually kill him right here. Oh, so close. Wow, that was close. What's this? Stomach punch. 
No, we'll just uh, heal up. Level up. In turn, facing that way. And you... Oh, you don't have the, uh, the rock throw thing. Well, you can step over here and then get him. Nice. Halt us down. This way now. There's more cultists ahead. Good opportunity to see if you remember how to use your body alchemy in battle. Take these throwing knives. Like regular equipment, they're equipped through the mercenary menu. Consumable items can only be used once. They don't cost any extra action points to use. Keep track of them. They can be real tie turners in battle. Okay. Consumable items can be equipped in the character menu. These items can only be used once per battle, but cost no action points to use, so use them wisely. All right. And um, I leveled up. How do I make use of that? Select class. Mercenary. Sharpshooter. Oh, I should actually be on sharpshooter since I have the uh, thing equipped. And that gives me snipe, take precise aim at a vital organ. Ooh, to damage the target. Nasty. I should also equip. Oh, I can't equip now. Hmm. There you go. Throwing daggers there. What is this? Vitriol that's healing. Trinkets. Don't have any trinkets. Don't have any other active abilities. Okay. I did level up. Ah. Ah. Okay. So we can spend points on things. Sharpshooter. Uh, re requires two action points. Yes. Okay. Progress zero of 150. Ooh, mercenary pocket sand. Injure the enemy by throwing sand and dirt in their eyes. Deals damage to the target, inflicts a blinded status effect. Okay, I'm not sure. Do I do I select this to unlock it? No, it doesn't doesn't seem like doesn't seem like I can do anything with that extra point. I just have more points. Okay, so we're gonna definitely want to be on the sharpshooter to level that up a bit, and then we'll have to switch over to rogue. But we'll do that in the next episode. Thank you very much for joining me. We'll see you next time.